So hopefully you, you've been able to check out that clip, all right? We try to add a clip to the, the intro part. And hopefully you've been able to check that out. And you, you see some of the pictures of some of the folks we're talking about. And you see how they're beating the black, this, this black man, African man, they're beating him like a slave in the street. But this ain't nothing new. So we talk about the um, Islamo-fascists today, or we speak about the Mohammedan, the pale red Arabs, and we speak about what the Mohammedan, the Muslim, the Arabs did in the slave trade, both in East Africa, you understand, on the Horn of Africa, the Ethiopian, what's known as the Horn of Africa today, and the Ethiopian part where Ethiopia is, now we're hearing about West Africa. So this is clearly an invasion, Islamo-fascist invasion of Africa. This is what we want to reason on because it's very, very important for us to check it out. And we're, we're citing Brother um, Wendell Manley's, um, Manley's uh, uh, text to us that just reminded us of the clip that we just previously, hopefully, it's been posted and you have seen it at the Illnet, Ethiopian World Net site where it shows actual some of the actual footage from a BBC report and you see one of these guys you can tell that this guy comes from Afghanistan Pakistan I think even in the report it says that these guys are coming in that so-called pseudo Islamic scholars and everything like that and there's this whole upsurge in a new radicalization and what happened with um, Gaddafi's Libya and all this confusion so when we're speaking about the Islamo-fascists, a lot of folks and a lot of careless Ethiopians, they are defending the enemy. They are defending the enemy and for what profit? We don't know what profit they're getting out of it. They're trying to talk this peace and love stuff while there's a serious judgment, you know what I'm saying, that is neglected. And, the, and part of it is historical, because they don't rec recognize the true history. They don't recognize why what has been written in our Ethiopian history. In fact, they have said that our ancestors, you understand, who, who wrote these documentations, I'm talking about from an Ethiopic perspective, concerning the whole Islamo-fascist and, and the Mohammedan and, and how they destroyed many churches in Ethiopia, the Ahmed Grain, was known as the Ahmed Grain period, and he was backed by what they call the Futul, was the Futul uh, Habasha, the conquest of the conquest of, of of quote Ethiopia or Abyssinia. Even the whole Abyssinian thing is a part of it. That's why we don't call I myself Abyssinian. This is why His Imperial Majesty reaffirmed the name of Ethiopia that this country is called Ethiopia because the other fascists, the so-called Roman Catholic fascists, such as Mussolini and others, during their five-year occupation of Ethiopia, tried to call Ethiopia, tried to bring this Abyssinian thing, this Abyssinian name. And now you have foolish, careless Ethiopians, many of them who cannot really even read their own language, and know nothing about the real history of Ethiopia from the indigenous resources. In fact, they go to these schools in the West and they believe all this psychobabble, not really recognizing the big picture. So they deny their own testimony and accept the false witnesses of the enemies, whether they call themselves so-called Europeans, whether they call themselves friends of Ethiopia, all of them that would try to deny that the Kibra guests the Fitta Neges, our history, the Queen of Sheba, King Solomon, all of those who would try to deny the veritas or the, the, the truth of that. You understand? They're setting us up. And now you're beginning to see in the Mali Song, the Mali Timbuktu region, and I'm about to say Mali Songhai and Timbuktu because you recall this book right here, From Babylon to Timbuktu. This is connected with the Arab and the Islamic invasion of Ethiopia, you understand the Islamic invasion now of greater Africa. So we're seeing the effects of this in the West, you know, and there's a, there's a whole Moorish, historical Moorish connection to this as well that is not very favorable. We don't blame the brothers and sisters today who are Moors because of noble Drew Ali, you understand, but historically speaking, they need to understand that and recognize that. 
This is the same reason why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we are Muslims, but not like those pale red Arabs. And so when I say to a lot of folks and got into some of these personal, private discussions and everything, that, um, you know, I, and I love uh, Malik al Haj al Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X, but really he, he was a traitor. He, he betrayed the trust. He violated the oath. Now, a lot of folks will say, oh, Malcolm X, he's the, he was the real one. We should listen. You're a bunch of hypocrites. Even your parents are hypocrites because you wasn't there for him then when he was making those moves. Many of you all, like, whether not even a part of the Nation of Islam, you didn't join the OAAU. This is all garbage. This is all things people say now on the Internet and in public or at some sort of, you know, gathering on film or something to make it seem like, yes, I love him and he's the real one. And, and, and you're condemning the real man who lifted our people over here in the West out of the gutter. And I'm speaking of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He tried to warn us about those pale and red eyes. So we get someone like Malcolm X, who was a, who was a world celebrity, world-known celebrity. You know what I'm saying? In other words, he was a famous person, very famous. If you really put that, that, that age and that generation in perspective. So when he goes over there, they treat him well. Well, no doubt they know who he is. So he comes back and says that, well, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said and taught was a lie. Well, you, Mr. Former Pimp, you understand, with your hair all conked up and marcelled and every other little type of name they gave to that, you know, the straightening of their hair and conking their hair. So, you know, living in the image of the beast, in other words pimping and hoeing your woman and white woman and others and whatever the drugs he was dealing with, so forth and so on. Let's recognize. Stop biting the hand that feeds you. You see what I'm saying? And it's just like this Torah portion that we're in, in Bar Midbar. Bar Midbar. You know what I'm saying? This, this whole series of Torah portion in the book of Numbers, it kind of displays the same sort of characteristics that is unique and peculiar to one people and one people only. In the artificial state, Negroes, blacks, and colored 13th and 14th Amendment person, and unfortunately, because many of our African so-called people on the continent look up to this foolishness that black people are doing over here, they are living in that same image. So they're living in the image of so-called African Americans or looking up to the African-American example, and the majority of the African-Americans are living in the image of the beast. So what we have is our people living in the image of the one who's living in the image of the beast. Why don't they just cut the chase? Some of the Africans actually do. Check out some of the Nollywood movies, so forth and so on. We're not even talking about what's going on in Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? This is a land grab. This is about land. Because everywhere that the Islamicists and the so-called Mohammedans, if you, you can look at an a aerial view, you know, a satellite view and everything like that, wherever they have been for X amount of time, you notice that the land turns to desert. The land is not blessed. It is cursed. Because something wrong that they are doing. Now, the Bible, the scriptures, the Torah, it gives us the clearest insight into that particular matter. However, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, lost sheeple who have been hoodwinked and bamboozled, you understand, know, by white supremacy and the whitewashed Jesus and all the other, I call it trauma-based, trauma-based cultural mind control. You, you know, because all the trauma they have gone through that they actually turn away from the very document you know what I'm saying? That was meant for them because all the white man had to do was whitewash Jesus, whitewash the story, and be the liar, thief, you understand, murderer and destroyer that the last 400 plus years of his story tells us that he has been. So on the point about um, Timbuktu and Mali, this is an invasion, if you notice. If you really check it out in the clip that we, that we have, and, and there's other clips out there, um, do your own homework on this. You find there's a lot of these Mohammedans who are coming from all the stand countries. You know the stands? 
the sands, the, the understand, I don't understand countries, the Afghanistans, the Pakistan, the Turkmenistans, and oh, they've they got a whole bunch of these stands, you know, Uzbekistan, and this and that. In, in the ancient times, our ancestors, and let me just uh, show a couple of books. This, this one is, uh, is called the Lefafa Siddiq, the Bandlet of Righteousness. All right, um, Frontlines published their copy, but we've published a copy of this as well and try to lay it out a little bit better according to the original, but still you can get either copy, whether from us or whether from them, if you want to get our copy of this. And this doesn't go into all the details about this subject matter, but it does touch on something in here. There's a particular document here, right? There's a particular document here that speaks about, let's go to the table of contents. And there's a particular document that speaks about the land of the cannibals. I found that to be interesting. Okay, right here is on page XVI. And it speaks of um, so-and-so and so in the land of the, the, the okay, Saint An okay, actually there's two particular documents, the appendix of this. It speaks about the Virgin Christian Gilmarium's vision of hell. Keep that in mind. Because all of these pseudo Mohammedans, Islamo fascists, their own prophet Mohammed, Salam, if you want to say, peace be upon him, because he even exposed these very same Islamo fascists who today, or maybe yesterday, but today in the sense of in this present time, are destroying Islamic mosques. And, 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 and disturbing Islamic cemeteries, you understand, that have been there since the 15th century. So this brings us right, so-called, back or into the context of Ahmed Grang, you understand, of the Islamo-fascist invasion of Ethiopia where they destroyed countless churches, they destroyed countless manuscripts. I mean, even for the Ethiopic... Um, documents and manuscripts that, that we have and we have access to again and we're publishing so forth and so on. Any serious researcher has all, always had to admit that who knows what we, what we have lost, you understand, based on these particular incidences. And this is one of the reasons why we publish the next book right here. Um, it's actually in the, in the actual text of the time. So if you look at it, it uses, like, here it says the church history. So it uses um, this old type of F, like if you look at some of the 1611 Bibles. So it might be a little challenging to read. Don't say it's difficult unless you have no, no trust in Yeshua. You understand? He is, he is our strength. You understand? The Christ of his majesty, Zion, I strength. In this particular document, it actually talks about um, the main point, we think, is concerning how Ethiopia was a church that was never under the papal yoke. And though the Pope and Popery tried hard, you know saying, tried hard to bring them under yoke, hoodwink and bamboozle them, they still maintained that integrity. So when we look in the, the Constitution and bylaws of the Ethiopian World Federation, it says, we, the black people of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination to secure, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. Let's understand that because there's a lot of folks who are running around talking about their president of this organization, their executive, so forth and so on. So we back up. They want to push us, I and I, out. And I and I, I and I local, I and I brothers and sisters who just try to repair the breach, you understand? The same teaching that we're doing here is the same teaching we try to do there, but within the corporate sense of this, they said, hey, you, you know, we got it. Well, you, you better get it because a lot of folks are going to be knocking on your door and saying, hey, what's up? What's up with this? this his majesty gave us this. Don't you see what's going on in Africa? Don't you see what's going on to us out here in the wilderness of the Americas? Yovas, we need to be able to govern Yovas and ourselves. But if there's not that understanding of our divine heritage, that's where the faith comes from. That's where the courage comes from. That's where the justness of the cause comes from. So when we look at historical Ethiopia, we have to lament 
That means like cry like a funeral, you know what I'm saying? Cry like mourn for someone when we look at what's happening present day with Ethiopia and Ethiopians at home and abroad. They now got Ethiopia. Once they remove the king out the way, like it's a Negus Komotu, Bemani Gamotu. You understand? If the king dies, right? This is the old ancient Ethiopian legal saying as well. But if the king dies, where will we get justice from? To whom do we get justice from? If, if there's no king, and we can see clearly that that has been a part of the satanistic agenda, so-called Freemasonic Illuminati, the Gentiles, uh, biblically speaking, the Gentile world dominion powered by Satan. But it's not just the Europeans. See, see, this is something that we have to understand. It's not just the Europeans. So within our order, when we speak about that the Federation is a Judeo, has a Judeo-Christian foundation, you know, that means that Muslims and Christians can come together, can coexist, but that's in our divine heritage. And we're living in the present time, even in Ethiopia, where there's this increasing foreign or fringe influence within the whole Islamic um, society that is causing, you know what I'm saying, that is causing this, this kingdom to rise against kingdom, nation to rise against nation, brother to be against brother, and causing all this confusion. So that's how we can trace it once again to the scriptures. Now there's a, a lot that I want to really share with you on this particular point, but let me just give you what I and I, brother, has communicated to I and I. And it's interesting because we saw a clip where they actually was tearing down or trying to break into someone's tomb. I'm like, an Islamic tomb from the 15th century. Why are they trying to get into somebody's tomb? Look what they have done in Egypt. We show you the clip where they built their so-called mosque just recently, a Johnny-come-lately a Johnny mosque. They just built on top of an ancient Egyptian ancient Egyptian um, um, remains and ruins, you understand? And we know what they be doing because they, what they do is if they think some, something's under this piece of land, they quickly will build a mosque, build something, build some store, almost like when they come to America, the same thing that they basically do. They'll build something there, and then inside the house, they will dig, you understand, to, under the levels, you understand, to steal our art and facts, to steal our ancestral art and facts, or to find the gold, the silver, the precious gems and other things, and melt it down. So who knows how much you understand? So this is not about a religious. People say it's a religious thing. It's not a religious thing. You understand? It's good versus evil. And right now it seems as though evil is trying to gain the upper hand and is exercising itself in wickedly evil ways. Because think about it for a moment. Christ, uh, uh, Muslims are tearing down and breaking into um, mosque. If, if Satan be against Satan, then his house shall not what? What, what does our master say, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If if, if, if Satan be divided against himself, his house cannot what? Stand. So the clip that um, Brother Manley saw, he said that it's interesting because there's a legend that says that this door, the door that they were trying to break into in Mali, in other words, you have it's a lot of black so-called pseudo-Muslims getting caught up into this. It's, it's a cult. It's fanaticism. But they are being guided by these cannibals. They are being guided by the so-called Pakistani and Afghani ones. So we can see it's a creeping invasion, like a serpent on their belly, a creeping invasion into Africa. And we already know about the hell and devastation, destruction that has been caused in the East. And a lot of that is still ongoing. Now I've got those people who are actually brothers of each other, you understand, even with their religious differences, under the monarchy, the Solomonic Davidic monarchy, they were at peace with one another. And when the Europeans came in, when, when the Italians came in and the Romans came in, both Christian and Muslim in Ethiopia, the faithful Muslims who recognized the true history, they came together and they fought together against the foreign European invasion. 
In fact, many of them also fought against Ahmed Grain, which some say was a Gala or Orimo or Somali, and they will tell you that they're basically the same people. You know what I'm saying? Basically, the Somali are a type of Orimo people, so forth and so on. But what the devil has done is sow the, the, the seeds, right, the weeds, you understand, know to divide and conquer them, especially during the communist phase post-Illuminati um, revolution against the King of Kings, 74, 75, and thereafter. And we've actually seen and read the materials that they were circulating, some of the materials that they were circulating to the Ethiopians and to others to basically divide and conquer the people because they've tried every strategy. And, and we can trace this historically. You'll see even in fairly recent times, you know, almost the same thing that, that um, went on biblically. You remember when Christ was born, right, and Herod found out some two years or so after, about a year or two, because the wise man came. The wise man did not come right when Christ was born, but they came about a year, a year and a half or so. So when they had came through and they said, we have come to worship the king of the Jews, we're looking for the king of the Jews, Herod immediately. And now, now Herod is interesting too. Because Herod, if you study, the Bible tells you and other history, historical documents from the Hebrew Jewish side, from the Roman side, and others basically tell you that Herod was an Indumean. He was an Indumean. People say, what does Indumean mean? Good question. An Edomite, a Hazar, Esau's, Esau's children. So there's also a racial, very interesting, there's a racial component in this. They will say it's about religion and purity of Islam and the caliphate, so forth and so on. Listen, let me see if I can, let me see if I can get this right here off of the shelf. Okay, listen, we, you know, you know, we know, we know what we're talking about with this. You understand? Because we read Arabic. You understand? Arabic fusa. At least we grew up reading it. Have been reading it so much recently because we found our truth. You understand? We found the truth of God concerning us and our people. So if you, if you, read, if you read these things, Bukhari, you know, Sahih al-Bukhari, translated by Muhammad, Musin Khan. Khan, you see these names? A lot of, over the years, they've been printing and publishing a lot of this resource, so they basically have become on a level of authority in Islam. But when you really trace the true Islamic roots, since Ishmael, is also descendant of Abraham. But here's the thing. These ones are not pure Ishmaelites either. You understand? We know what they do with uh, the genocide and the, the ethnic cleansing. We see what happened in Darfur. Darfur is another big example as well. So when we look at this Islamic invasion of Africa, there's an Islam everywhere you see that there's like along East Africa and even North Africa, one time was Christian. You understand? Know Black African Christian. You understand? Know the only place that really remains, even to this day, to, a, to an extent, but is struggling, you understand, know is struggling for its survival, is Ethiopia. You know, right? Is Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is in a life and death struggle for her survival. So when some of y'all over here talk about, you know, kind of embracing Islam and then also trying to sound Rastafari, you got to watch it. I know a lot of folks will say blah, 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 blah. If you're coming from Elijah Muhammad perspective of Islam, you understand, which recognize that the black man is God, you understand, in spirit and in truth, you understand, you know, not the, you know, not the the um, essential God in flesh, because that, that's an impossibility on that level, where the black man is God. Black man is arm, leg, leg, arm, head supreme. You know, some folks reject that. Some folks say, well, it's actually these people over here. And you see a lot of that going on over here, where a nigga never listened to another nigga and barely listened to a white man, but somebody come with a sheet wearing a dress, and some dingy clothing from the East and has these books and everything, and you think that he knows what he's talking about because he sounds like he's reading another language. You're like, that is my language. And now you become a slave. You become a slave for what is seeking to destroy, you understand, your heritage. You want to really support 
the 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 real black Muslims. Look at what's going on in Mali. Why are they destroying? Why are they persecuting black Muslims who have been who can trace their their Islamism on a certain level back to at least the 15th century? So now they're trying to break into this door. And the brother made I and I know that they have a legend that says that this door shall not be opened until the end of the world. So now many of the residents in the area are saying, well, it must be the end of the world. You understand that? Especially all the 2012, so forth and so on, speculation, pronostication, plus there was another solar flare. Just recently they say this is for the, for the fraud of July. That's what they say. You really think so? You really think so? You think John celebrates these things? Really? Okay, let's see. We shall see. But this is a very, very important point we want to opine on because some of the other vids that we've put up and we've touched on some things here and there, how they've also been trying to resurrect um, Lijasu. You understand? Lijasu. You know, they're trying to say Lijasu was the real one and so forth and so on. He was trying to do the same thing that we're seeing done in, in Sudan, the persecution you know what I'm saying, of the indigenous Christians. He's trying to do the same thing that's going on in Somalia with this Islamo-fascism. You know what I'm saying? He's doing the same, he was trying to do the same thing that we see going on in Mali today. And His Majesty and the faithful Ethiopians, you know what I'm saying, in Christ, had to stand up and oppose him and depose him. You know, it's, it's like what David told Solomon on his deathbed, I think, according to Corinthian, the Corinthian version of it, because there's a the king's version, and it's Corinthian, which is a little bit later after the Babylonian exile, that's where we get Corinthian speaking some of the same stories as we have in the book of Kings. It says, only show yourself a man. You understand? Know the basic instruction that Dawit gave to his illustrious son, Negus Solomon, was that, only show yourself, you understand, only show yourself a man. In other words, don't be a bitch, you understand, don't be a so-called religious bitch. You understand, they, 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 are, they are persecuting you, and the next thing we're going to hear about is them killing off the men and starting to rape the woman and starting to try to set up another population because they've already eaten up their land. You know what I'm saying? They're already eating up their land. Look at Afghanistan. Look at Pakistan. Look at that region of the world. Look at Arabia. You know what I'm saying? Look at some parts of Africa, uh, even parts of Sudan. Look at Sudan, North Sudan, where the Mohammedans are. And actually, the Sudanese Muslims are really the, the true Ahli al -Bayt. You understand? They're, they're the true family of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, words of the Dr. York connection, Imam Isa al Hadi al Mahdi. His story about his past and that connection is true. The problem is he don't really know too much about Ethiopia or His Majesty. I'm speaking about your beloved Dr. York. You understand? So he should let those who know speak. But when he's speaking concerning these other matters, that's what we say. We agree with Dr. York and almost everything else except Ethiopia because there that you get to recognize he really don't know what the bleep he's saying. You know what I mean? He don't really know what the belief he's saying. We went through this already, and some folks don't get it. But um, maybe Dr. York one day, hopefully, you know, free Dr. York. When doc hopefully Dr. York get free, and he basically, maybe he'll tell you something to that effect. You know what I'm saying? But definitely, whether he tells it or not, free him. We don't think that he should be. It's a whole trumped-up charges against Dr. York. But here's what's interesting. Dr. York tried to warn you. Dr. York tried to warn you, tried to warn all of us from the 70s all the way through before, like, you know, before the, the, the bombing in the 90s, and then they went through a different change of, of you know, they, they kind of changed some of their, their um, I won't say practices, but they changed their, their, their presentation. Let's say it like that. They still held to the true points that they were teaching. But Dr. York, he tried to warn, you know, send you all about this. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, unfortunately, many of you are there listening. And this is so, so, so interesting when you start to check out some of Dr. York's books. In fact, um, we just see this book over here at the bottom of a stack. You remember this right here? There was this book, Ansar Cult. This was a rebuttal book that York wrote, right? This is the rebuttal book that York wrote. And it was a free book, kind of a thick book. 
you know, you can't, you, you can't really, you despise their generosity. There's a thick book right here, a thick book where he actually rebuts point for point. I don't know if you can still find this particular book, but those who really want to get a jump, you understand, on those Islamo-fascist ass really need to get this particular book right here. Because this is, this, is, this is a life or death, you understand, struggle. Not just in this world, but the world to come. Because if you read about those who will go to hell, it says that the coward, the liar and the coward also goes to hell. In other words, if you're a coward about the truth, and we see that um, Kielis, the, the Kielis Ethiopians have almost kind of allowed this to come in. It's because of Ethiopia standing up to Ahmed Gran, defeating Ahmed Gran, you understand, and in all other attempts like that, that Africa, in a sense, had a relative state of peace. So they had to remove his imperial majesty. Now you'll say, well, what's the connection with the Islamic uh, invasion of Africa that you're speaking about and this thing that's going on in Mali? Listen, the only thing you hear about Africa, the big thing that gets everybody's attention, is that Coney thing. You know the Coney thing, that fraud. That fraud with that Bati boy, that Bushti, running around, switching down the street, naked and talking a whole bunch of scandalous Shiat, Shia shit, whatever. You understand? He did this video about Coney. And some say that the Coney guy in the video might have already been killed. It's like old news. You understand? But he did this video, oh, let's get the big bad boogeyman. There, Alex Jones did a good, a, a good clip. He did, he, Alex Jones did some justice there, but we can't expect the Gentiles to fight our battles. You know, a lot of times people are like, how come they don't say such and such? Oh, they didn't talk about it. So why don't you say anything? You're a coward? You're afraid? You understand? Where do you think that's going to get you? Both in this life, all stressed out, all punctified, and where that's going to get you in the next life? Well, if, uh, besides what you think, just read the word. That tells you it in, in itself. But we have a couple of documents we want to share as we point it to the Lefafa Siddiq again. You understand? Because this is, what we're seeing happening is pulling together all that we have studied and heard. It's really qualifying and verifying. You understand? What was true about what we were taught? It's like first thing you go to the class. Like in the military academy, you're studying the books, you're studying from the different professors, so forth and so on, right? The different generals or whatever like that, um, training officers. And then you go out there, you understand? And then you have, have to actually put what you learned into effect and you're on the ground. You understand? We need more boots on the ground because there is an invasion of Africa by these so-called... Um, these stannies, the, the stannies, the Islamo stannies. Oh, that would be a good one right there, Islamo stannies. I think Islamo stannies because it's interesting. They're coming from Pakistan and Afghanistan to West Africa. Why? Because there's oil, because there's gold, because there's diamond, because there's land, and because they are fertile black women. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. <laughs> Hey, I and I said it. That those are the re those are some of the top reasons. It's not for what you think. There's a oh we wanna bring Sharia. Notice that they're saying everywhere Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law. They wanna bring Sharia law and now they're kicking out the rightful, we can say, inhabitants, at least over the last four hundred, five hundred years, the rightful inhabitants, and here's the kicker. Here's what they say, the Gentiles call this the kicker. The kicker, the kicker is that they are Muslims. The, the, the ones who, they, who they're fighting against are Muslims, and they're tearing down and breaking into Islamic burial grounds that are at least 500 or so years old from the 15th century. Why is that? Breaking into mosques. Why is that? And destroying these things. Why are they destroying Africa's unique Islamic heritage? Why are these, first of all, ones who are of a total different ethnicity, we could say racially, they're Edomites. Same one we saw you, showed you in the video, these ones that like to dye their beard red 
and so forth and so on, and they kind of look like the devil, at least from the caricature, you know what I'm saying? And even regardless of what they look like, let's judge them by their deeds. You understand? Know Don't judge the tree by how it looks. Of course, you've got to note that. You know what I'm saying? But let's look for the fruit. Let's look for what they are doing. Once again, John 10.10, 10, right? The thief, the thief, right? The thief now is coming in under religious disguise. And from some of our studies, we saw something interesting. A lot of those who oppose the Pope, they say the two horns of the Antichrist are really the Mohammedan and the papacy. I, I thought it was very This is going back to the 1500s, Europeans, European Christians who broke free of, of, of the papacy and began to see what the Word of God really said, like the Martin Luther types, the Protestant Reformation, in the good days of the Protestant Reformation. But like the Bible says, their works were not fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? They began to play the hypocrite later on. You know what I'm saying? And we'll go into some of that detail from the prophecy. But in the early days of the Protestant Reformation, many of them, Calvin talked about it, um, Luther talked about it. Um, they, they were opposing the Pope. They said the Pope is, is the devil. That's Babylon, mystery Babylon. They made no bones about it. They were very bold about it. You understand? Know Especially the German, the German Brotherhood, the German Christians. They were very bold about it. You understand? Know because remember, Germany were the only ones really able, besides Carthage and Hannibal, but talking about the Europeans, they were the only ones who were able to really give the Roman Empire a run for their money. So what did Rome have to do? The Rome had to make the German, the Goths, the Visigoths, make them the Praetorian Guard. You understand? So the emperors were protected by their former, their former enemies. Why? Because they were good fighters. But there's another key thing about that people. Yes, I have to say, some things about Germany I actually kind of like. You understand? I give thanks. The Germans are, are more straightforward. You understand? That's what I like about the Germans. They're straightforward. Not like some of these other kind of Europeans that be playing different kind of games. The French will play the romantic. You know what I mean? The, um, the Italians will play the hypocrite. I'm talking about culturally vis-a-vis -vis God's prophecy. The English, well, let's deal with the English at another time. Let's go on with this. So anyway, Martin Luther, Calvin, and the rest of them, they said that the two horns, because they were looking at Revelation, a book that the Roman Catholic Church really did not look at so much or teach the people so much. So once Martin Luther and others began to print the Bible for themselves and began to read it, this is what increased literacy and education, even in America. So when you see all these hypocrites today talking about no Bible in school, no God in school, that's why your children are stupid. That's why, they, that's why they can't read or write or even add and people jerking them around with the economic system. They don't even know how the economic system even works. You understand? And part of it is like if you turn your back on John, in other words, the only thing that really blessed America, you understand, is the lost sheep. You understand? And some of their, the Europeans' belief and practice in God. You understand? Belief in the Bible and practice in God. I know that's a little controversial for some of, for some of you atheists out there, but we, we really don't care. It's the truth. Prove, prove that it's wrong. You understand? Don't just tell us that you think it's wrong, but prove that it's wrong. We're showing you right here certain basic proofs about this particular matter. So when we look at the, the, the German, Calvin, and, 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 and or Luther the German, Calvin, and some of the other ones, they clearly stated that, in their opinion, these two horns of the Antichrist, you understand, the two horns of the Antichrist, denominationally, religiously speaking, was the papacy, right, and these and the, and the Ottoman Turkish or the white Muslim, because that's where the, that's where the Europeans drove the black, the, the white Muslims, you understand, or the Indo-European Muslims drove out the blacks, and the blacks they drove out were the Sudanese, ones like the Sudanese and even some of the Somalians as well. They drove them out to, the, to, to Africa. Now, a couple of years later, you know, what, they, what, they, what they're doing now is trying to, like, like um, uh, treat them like adopted children. 
You know what I'm saying? Gives them a little money. They got some oil money. They got some riches in this Gentile world system. So they know that people are poor, living like Africans or blacks. So they give them a little bit of money, so forth and so on. They send over all their kind of religious indoctrination, all these kind of books and everything about Sharia, Sharia law, so forth and so on. And then they hype up and say, see these other black people? They're Christian. See the animus, so forth and so on. Allah says to kill them, take their land, take their woman, take their wealth, steal from them. And if Allah is God, in their opinion, that sort of a God is a devil. It's very clear. It's very clear. And even Mohammed says so. People say, well, how do you say Mohammed says so? I'm going to show you a little document here. I had to go into the archives for this one. Because this stuff is heating up. This stuff is really, they talk about the heat is on, right? This is the old archive right here. I don't know, I think we have it up there. Check this out. This is the rift. This speaks about the rift between um, Muslims and Rastafari. If we, were to, if we were to redo it, we'll call it the rift between Mohammedans. Mohammedans and Rastafari. It's an old document we published back in 1991. In 1991, so I think this is one of the scan, the scannable copies, and so we want to go through a couple of pages right here and share with you some of the ideas that we, um, you know, that we uh, had put together in this. We touched on the Marcus Garvey. You can see right here some of the. These are all some some historical quotes as well. You can see where it has right there it says, "Are these Islamic facts or bias?" Because that's what you see going out there a lot. And even His Majesty speaks about the Islamic bias. When we talk about study and show yourself approved, you can't even see the whole thing about Mohammed as well. You know when they talk about um, the, I think it happened in Scandinavia, one of these European countries where they had a contest to draw the Prophet Mohammed and they killed the artist or the, the guy who drew it, so forth and so on. It's those same people who um, would destroy our churches in Ethiopia or support those, destroy, those Mohammedans, destroying our churches, destroying our history, destroying our culture. And now we see it's not just because we were Christian. It really comes down to that we, we are black. We are true black. We are righteous black people, and they want to destroy our legacy. So then later on, they will say, you have no history. You understand? So whose work are they doing? Are they doing God's work? Well, they believe that they are doing God's work. But God has already checked them, and I and I need to wreck them. You understand? Need to wreck them. And straight up. This is, this, is, this is not, if you're, you know, the coward, the coward, you, you know, you we really have to think of, and it's not that I and I is so bold. You understand? I mean, this is a point of principle. You understand? How could you not stand up for the truth? If, if God is truly in you, in spirit and in truth, if you love the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Shuaha Mushia, Jesus Christos Getachin, how can you just stand aside idly? Oh, you're going to wait till it happens to you, right? It's like the old saying, they came for so-and-so, I never did nothing. They came for so-and-so, I never did nothing. Finally, when it came for me, there was nobody left to do anything. Is that what you're waiting for? Well, wait by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Wait by yourself on that particular one. We were looking up where Christ said that the days are coming when anyone, you know, when they'll kill you, they'll try to kill you, and they will think they do God's service. This is what we find to be so very interesting in the Word. He says the days are coming when they shall kill you, you know what I'm saying, when they shall kill you, and they think it's a religious duty. Where do we know that from? Well, John, if I'm correct, John 16, is it John 16? John 16 and 2. The disciples are warned of persecution. So this is a warning, too, for I and I brothers and, and Hilab Nari and, 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 and the community over there and, and the other brothers and sisters who get the opportunity. The, they have a difference of, uh, with the, the uh, Internet over there in some of the African countries. It's not as strong. They don't have all the technology, so forth and so on. And part of that is our responsibility. You know, because we've totally neglected, you understand, our, 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 our homeland. We have not secured our homeland. 
You know what I'm saying? We've been fighting for somebody else's thievery over here in America. They they stole this land from other people, and we are like we have some rights here. Not by God. Not by God. You can believe all your, your spookism you want. Not by God and his word. You understand? Know the only problem is that there's not righteous people to carry out this word. You see what I'm saying? So the devil continues to do what he can do because he's not really opposed in spirit and in truth. And in truth means in, in the real world, in spirit. You understand? Know if you're a coward, you can't oppose the evil doer in spirit because your spirit has already bowed to Antichrist. As these things I have spoken to you, John chapter 16, these things I have spoken to you, that you should not be offended. It's interesting when we look at that word offended, the word offended really means to stumble. Bamarinya. He says, these things I'm, I, I'm speaking to you so you won't trip up and fall. You understand? It's necessary for us to touch on this Islamic invasion, Islamo-fascist invasion of Africa. You know what I'm saying? So we don't fall for the old okie doke again. You know what I'm saying? How are these people calling themselves some so called Islamic scholars or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Coming halfway around the world, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to just sit idly and do nothing? Oh, when the, 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 that Coney that thing, that, that, that false flag, that was a false flag right there. You understand, talking about the Coney. Oh, we need to do something about this boogeyman in what, Uganda, the Kenya area, the sub-Ethiopia area the below the border right there. Um, we need to do something about it. And, and all these white people and children said, yes, Connie's a bad man. You know, I'm going to put up, repost, uh, we need to repost the Alex Jones clip about that because maybe you didn't see it. There, Alex Jones is right on the mark, and he's providing a lot of additional evidence that goes along with this gospel truth of the King of Kings and his Christ. You know what I'm saying? So we can admit that into evidence. You know what I'm saying? Submit that and admit that into evidence. That was a false flag. But nothing is going on. You know what I'm saying? What about the Sudanese, the, the South Sudanese, the Nubian Christians? You know, what about all you people that say, I'm a Nubian, I'm black, I'm a Nubian. Well, what are you doing or saying about the, oh, oh, because you are into some other religion or something like that, so you don't recognize what's happening to your people, so there's a religious difference for you not supporting them, uh, not a racial difference, because you black, they black, you understand, they're being persecuted mainly because they're not Harab, they're not Arab according to this false standard of Arabism. But Christ says that he's speaking these words to us so we should not be offended. It's not the way your preacher and pastor and some of you all who are linguistically um, disabled, you understand, you see offended, you think, oh, that offends me. No. It means so you don't stumble. So you don't stumble. And not, not always physically stumble. You understand? The physical stumble is not really the bad thing. You ever had a, had a dream or you're sleeping and you feel like you're falling in, 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 in your dream? Now, imagine going through that continually. It's like a lot of y'all fall that way in your spiritual, you know, in your spiritual responsibility and your responsibility to your brother, to your brother man. It says, the, they shall put you out of the synagogues. So we see in this sense... Yeshua, Judean, or, quote, Jew, end quote, right? And many of the disciples also Judean or Israelites, Jews, quote, end quote, right? And they were putting them out of their own places of worship. Now we look at what's going on in Timbuktu. Now we see what's going on in Mali. You understand? There is an invasion, Islamo-fascist invasion, but it's an invasion for resources, because wherever you see this so-called Islamism or Mohammedanism, you understand, has taken a land, the land always turns to desert, to desert. And that's just proof that it says that, that and to the rebellious, they dwell in a, in, 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 in a barren land, in, in, in a wasteland. You understand? So they are going there after these resources. It says, yea, the time cometh. Now, the point about the time when it said that, well, when this mosque doors are open, then it will be the end of the world. The residents are quite right to say that this must be the end of the world. 
You understand? So everyone recognizes there is a new world coming, and everyone is trying to invest in it except the lost sheeple. You understand? Except black people who are in ignorance, or Africans, or, or careless Ethiopians, whatever you want to call it, black Negroes, coloreds. You understand? Etc., etc., etc. So he says, the time, so the time, this is the time. You understand? So when you hear about New World Order, what do you think about? Do you think about what am I and I and my brothers and sisters in faith, what are we doing to ensure our futures and the futures for our children and our posterity in this ever changing world? Or you all caught up on, well, what are they doing? Are they going to put a mark, a chip, or whatever like that? Oh, he's down with the Mason. Look at that hand sign he's doing. Oh, he's down. With, is that stupidness? That's all predictive programming. You understand? That's why most of you all, you, you, you know what I mean? Knowing what you know, what do you do? It says, that whosoever killeth you, so the time is coming, that whosoever shall kill you will think, will think, he doesn't really know, he doesn't have evidence, but he thinks that he do with God's service. So they're killing these Africans, these black people, and, they, and many of them happen to be black Muslims, at least since the 15th century, and they're being led by some so-called cannibals, Pakistani, Afghani, or whatever the stands, these light-skinned Muslims. And, and that's also dramatic. You look at the picture, yo, and you see it right there. So when, when a lot of the brothers and sisters are posting stuff about the Mohammedanism, you understand, and about the slave trade, that the Arabs and the Muslims are a part of it and were a part of this, and they have never even owned up to it. And even as many um, former Mohammedan, some of them of Arab, some sort of Arab nationality background, who even have turned state's evidence as well. And what state? The state of the King of Kings and his Christ, and has presented information from the inside that basically proves and verifies the basic, the basic points. There's, there's a persecution that is going on, and this is, the blat this is one of the most blatant examples of it. And these things will they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. I want you to pay attention to that, that Christ says, that these things they will do, and these things they are doing, you know what I'm saying, to many of our brothers and sisters and others in Africa and many innocent people, what about the children? What about the woman? Because you know what's the next thing that's about to go on. They're about to kill these black men and are about to F, have sex and, and rape, rape the woman and probably maybe kill some of the children too and, and create a whole new population. So when you look back and you say, what, what happened to all those black people? You understand? And isn't this guy from, like, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan? What was he doing here? Don't say you wasn't warned. You know what I'm saying? Don't say you wasn't warned. But I find something very interesting about what it says right here. You understand? Christ is telling us that they do these things because they have not known who? They have not known the Father. You understand? And I say to you in Rastafari Revelation, even the Father of modern Africa, Abatai Chin Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, because they have not known the Father, and they have not known me, Yeshua HaMoshiach says. They have not known the Father. Now, this particular book right here is the Middle East and Prophecy. Everybody's talking about the Middle East all the time on the news. How much have you heard on the news about what's going on with the the persecution against the Nubian Christians in Sudan. How much have you heard on the nightly news about that? I'm sure you heard something about Israel, Iran, Afghanistan, or something like that, right? And don't you know they've been taking monies away from you Negro, black, and colored communities, right, for all the programs and other things, which is really your right. You understand? People try to act like, I pay for your benefit. It's your right, period. To the period there. You know, but they've been taking monies away from those, those programs, and they've been sending it over to so-called 
Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and a whole bunch of other ones, I and I now understand, and really, I and I can't stand this no more. You know what I'm saying? Sooner or later, you know, something's going to break the camel's back. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to get what they got a little while ago. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 now they're burning even Ethiopian churches. They're burning churches in Ethiopia. You know, not just today, but they have been doing this in certain areas as they increase their slavery, as they enslave people to this religious dogma that is not really controlled by Mecca. It's not being controlled by Mecca like a lot of folks think, indirectly. It's really being controlled by Pakistan, Afghanistan, and these other stands over there. You understand? And so-called Taliban and the rest of them. And, and you might think that it's just a religious thing. Because that's the, that's the way they want to disarm you. You understand? They want to say, we want to express our religious rights, so forth and so on. You remember there were things that even Christians could not do. But when they come over here to America, even they're able to do a lot of these kind of crazy kind of things right here. Now, what's interesting about this, I was looking in this particular book right here, and you might know the psalm. It's up at one of the other, either the Melchizedek, the Melchizedek site um, on the YouTubes or another site. Some other ones might have picked up. We were showing you some clips, and we basically was chanting Psalm 83. Why is Psalm 83 so important? We're going to quote just a little bit from this particular book, because it's important for you to understand how or what Christ means where he says, they have not known the Father. You understand? But we're going to go now to the Father biblically, historically, you understand, at the root, at the fount of the whole Ish, Ishmael, you know what I'm saying? And then vis-a-vis -vis the Mohammedans and the, and the Harabs, the Arabs, and, and these, other, these other kind of stands, these, these Islam, uh, Islamo stands, Mohammedo stands, or whatever they want to call themselves, or whatever we decide to call them. Now, this is also connected with Amalek. Remember we talked about Amalek in the Bible? Amalek. You remember what Josh said? That there would be war with Amalek from generation to to generation. There will be war with Amalek from generation to generation. And in this generation, we see that there is this very same war. But let's go to the root for a moment. So there's a bit of family rivalry, right? There's a bit of family rivalry. So let's, let's just recognize the invasion of Africa, the Islamo fascists. They want to get a piece of Africa. Everybody want to get a piece of Africa. And those who have the best claim to Africa are you so-called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, you understand, who are just talking about, I'm just trying to make some paper. That's all you're making is paper. There's no wealth in that. Where's your, your wealth is on the continent. Your wealth is in the promised land. It, it's, when you, it's when you reclaim your birthright. You know what I'm saying? Instead, it's almost like a switcheroo has gone on. Just like with, with Yaakov and Esau, now it's like, like the switcheroo has gone on again, that they're trying to take our birthright. But then what was given to Esau? The sword was given to Esau. The sword was given to Esau. And what is also given to us in our birthright? The sword is also given. Make, make, no, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake. But as long as you are under an artificial status of nigger, black, and colored, you understand? And as long as you, all you care about is some nonsense, American idol, you caught up in idolatry, well, to those we are not speaking but to say to them to repent, have a change of mind before it's too late. Get to know the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before it is too late. You know what I'm saying? White supremacy ain't going to feed you forever because they're trying to feed themselves. That's the truth about it. Look what's happening in Europe. They're trying to feed themselves. Why do you think you keep hearing about future budget cuts and all these programs and how difficult? How many people, some of you may have not owned a home, but how many people have lost a home? Well, what do you think all this is about? You know what I'm saying? And even these guys are coming over here, and some of you all are actually renting out from some of these guys which came from the Pakistan, Afghanistan, or whatever. The, and I'm not saying all of them are bad people. This is, this is not what I and I are saying. But I'm saying that amongst them there's an evil agenda that we need to be awake 
aware, and to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Enough said. So there's a bit of family, there's a bit of family rivalry that's going on. There's a very bitter family rivalry that's going on. And in order to understand this Islamo-fascist, this Mohammedan conflict and the invasion, you understand, by these pale red so-called Hindi, Pakistani, these Hindi, Stani, and Pakistani Arabs or Muslims, well, they're not Arabs, they, they are actually Khazarians. The guys you saw whipping that black man in the vit, they are Khazarians. Make no doubt about it. In a sense, we can almost say they are more pure Khazarian, because these other Khazarians have mixed and mingled with Europeans. So their features have changed somewhat, and you can look at the historical pictures, even the European Jews, and you can see how some things have changed in some of the families, right? But there's a bit of family rivalry. This is what it's all about. It's, it, you know, it's a family affair, you can say. But to understand this conflict, we need to understand the history of those in conflict. So if we're looking over there at, at, at Timbuktu, at Mali, even the situation in South um, 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 Sudan, you understand, um, in the Horn of Africa, you, you know what I mean, even Yemen across the water, you understand, and in, and in Nigeria and other areas around Africa, even with Libya. You understand? Even with Libya, we need to understand who's who. Who is who in this conflict? So I saw that vid, and I see this, 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 this henna-faced, henna-haired, um, Arabs talking about Sharia law, Sharia. They were like, why are you beating this man, the black man, dark-skinned black man? And he's beating him, and you don't recognize these are the same ones you see in the historical etchings of the slave trade. These were the very same ones because they would get up and they would travel. They do this. They get up and they would travel in ancient days and today. Remember, they, they didn't go through what we went through, but we need to stop feeling sorry for I and I self when Jah has put it into our hand. The first thing is to make our wills obedient to good influences. The first thing is to study to understand what's what, to pray, to strengthen ourselves up. You know what I'm saying? Then we have a spree de corps. The Memphis Caduce will cause that unity. Then we won't be arguing over silly nonsense issues, mixed up moods and attitudes. You know what I'm saying? So it's our faith foundation, which is first and foremost. Like I said, let the others in the Federation talk about um, who is president and jockey for position. You know, we're focusing on I and I divine heritage first and foremost in the spirit, you know, and in the spirit of the Federation, in the spirit of the King of Kings and of Dr. Malak, Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. So we need to understand, well, first of all, well, who's who? Who is who in this Middle Eastern, in this Middle Eastern equation? Who is who? Who is who? Now, most would say it's the Jews and the Arabs. It's the Jews and the Arabs. Now, let's look at Africa, the, the Islamo-fascist invasion. Let's call, it that, let's call it what it is. Islamo, they tell you themselves, it's fascist. F-A-S-C-I-S-T, that's, that's that. Okay, fascist. Um, fascist invasion. I mean, they even try to take our flag and put that Mohammedan, that Mohammedan shit on our flag. That's right. It is. How dare you? If we were to go and, 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 and do the same thing to you, you would think by principle we are wrong. But see, a lot of my hypocrites, Manafikan, Kahadi watch, you understand the Kahadi Imiyauko, you know, or your you understand? You know, they don't, they don't understand. You, you know, they, they don't understand. And I'm going to bring in some of the Psalms. And the target, right, the target, the real target you think is the Middle East, the real target is Mama Africa. So while you're over here talking all this nonsense and barely, barely eating three, uh, three square meals, you understand? While you're over here talking this nonsense, they're over there stealing your land. 
and then they come over here and run your laundromat. Well, I say that because there's a dude over here, but we don't have no personal thing with them. We don't, we don't think we need to get to that point just yet. But, you know, each band, you know, each group, each, each, each one has to really, you know, stand up for their own rights in, in, in a situation. So, you know, but they're trying to steal this right here. They're trying to steal Africa. They can't really do it in the South so much. In fact, they work along with the white man in the South, like Gandhi. You know what I'm saying? He comes from the other kind over there. You know, but one thing is very clear that none of them really have our best interests, you know, in heart or mind, nor should they. So, they, so, so the target now is over here. The target is in this, um, this horn of, of, of or this region of Africa over here, Mali, Songhai, Timbuktu. All right, we're going to go into a little bit more. Stay tuned in, in the next part of this, the part, I guess, two or three. All right, the next part, coming, coming, coming next. Shalom.